Let me turn off the sound. And turn off the sound. Hi, this is Marie. I'm dialing in today through my cell phone. I want to make sure you can hear me. Hi, Marie. We can hear you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, we can get started without Sean. Oh, it would be nice if he was here. Yeah, I suspect he probably will be. All right, you want to, I don't know, you want to set that up like with the grid things that we usually see? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out which <laughs> thing to click on here. All right. Maybe view in the top right-hand corner. There you go. Gallery. Yeah, it is. Got it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to call this meeting to order. Short-term rental committee at 7.06 p.m. Uh, first order of business will be the minutes of the previous meeting. Anyone uh, have any additions or omissions from the Minutes of the previous meeting we'd like to bring out. I'm good with it. Marie, you good with the minutes of the previous meeting? Yes, I'm good with them. Thank you. I read them. Okay, thank you. I'll entertain a motion to accept. Motion to accept minutes of November 22nd. Steve, Second. all those in favor say aye. 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 Should we do a roll call vote on these since Marie isn't in the room? I, I mean, I don't think it's necessary. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, if the ayes have it, vote is um, minutes accepted. Okay, so let's move in to where we left off last meeting. Uh, we were having a standoff discussion about the need lack thereof for a special permit to have a non-occupied short-term rental. Who wants to kick off the discussion again this week? Well, I'll, I'll lead off, Wayne, uh, and just go back over what we've talked about for well, several times over the past year. Uh, if Nahant allows short-term rentals that are not owner-occupied as a principal use, uh, we will be the only community that will be following, uh, I mean, sticking with its own bylaws uh, uh, that is allowing that type of use. Uh, every other community around us, probably a, almost a, probably 128, 
uh, has in their bylaws or their ordinance uh, that these unoccupied investment rentals uh, are not allowed. We want them to be resident family or owner occupied or at, at the very least uh, operator occupied. Um, so I don't understand why we would want Nahant to become a target for that. That. Obviously, we are, as the owner, as the only seaside community less than 20 miles from Boston, uh, I think it makes us a target. And I don't see any reasonable and legal method for us to contain that to only the people that we want to see buy these properties. Uh, so in this regard. It's my firm belief that Nahant has no choice but to either not allow them at all, which is currently what we have. Basically, they're not listed on the table of use. Uh, or if we are going to allow them, that we allow them as a special permit only. And part of that special permit would require uh, that the, uh, well, given our existing special permit guidelines, uh, it would take into account the general purpose and intent of the bylaw and uh, if uh, uh, would also make sure that any short-term rental would be found in writing to be consistent with the residential use uh in place in a in any given neighborhood thank you Ron. i'm going to kind of piggyback on what rob just said i'm going to read <clears throat> the short-term rental ordinance this is actually a synopsis prepared by the city itself um so regarding non-owner occupied uh short-term rental. Um, so I'm quoting the answers. If it is not your primary residence, you will need a special permit from the Zoning Board of Appeals and to register for the non-owner occupied trash fee. New non-owner occupied short-term rentals are not permitted. So what that means is that they had existing non-owner occupied rentals. And even those would on, on the date of June 15th, 2019, if you had it prior to that date, you could keep it, and even then only with the special permit. And after that date, you couldn't even get that much. So, I mean, that's pretty clear. And it's kind of the situation that we're in right now ourselves. We, we, have, we know we have some non-owner occupied units in town. Um, I guess it would be probably virtually impossible to declare them uh, illegal at this point, but um, if we, I'm sure we could theoretically do something similar to what Salem did and grandfather in existing ones with a special permit and then shut off future units. That's, that's one of them. That's one use, one town uh, unit. So I guess it's just declared them um, not allowed everywhere except in the business and industrial zones. And even then they require a special permit. Linfield, same thing. It's all the special permit uses by the Board of Appeals. And as close as Lynn, uh, all these units yeah let me I'll read off of the regulation here a limited shear unit is a rental it's a residential unit that is the operator's primary residence in a owner adjacent unit the residential unit offered as a short-term rental that is not the owner's primary residence but is located within the same dwelling so that that would be like a you know a second unit in a multifamily building. 
primary residence shall mean the residential unit in which the operator resides for at least nine months out of a 12 month period. And there's no, there's no process to, to have a unit that's not in a building that the owner doesn't live in. None whatsoever, they don't allow it. So if that's, if that's what's going on in our immediate vicinity, to just allow people to come in and buy houses and uh, short-term rental units, I think we're, we're asking for trouble. I don't think, I mean, I don't mind being on the same footing as our neighbors, but to be way much more lenient than them, I think is, is going to be a real problem. And you really have to ask yourself why they're universally unanimous in not allowing that type of short-term rental. If, if I could, and hopefully, you know, I, I don't want to spend much time. Um, we've gone over this, I feel, a number of times. Um, Revere does not have an occupancy requirement. They, it's in writing, they do. They do in writing. It's on their page. It's, it says exactly that. You said you had a conversation with someone, which I means do. all they did was they're saying they're not, maybe they're not looking at it. And if I, you look up the ordinance, it specifically says owner. Uh, they have a management you. problem. They don't have, their, this This was passed by city or this is an, yeah. an ordinance in place passed by city council and the mayor saying that they are not allowed. And the two guys in that office both said the same thing. It needs to be reworded. That's not how we're doing it. I, I read it different, but again, but it says it says owner occupied. Swamp Scott. Swamp Scott doesn't have any rules yet, so we can't go by Swamp Scott. Uh, Swamp Scott has Swamp Scott does have a uh, virtual. What do they call that? The the uh, virtual zone uh, where uh, they call it their tourist area, tourist lodging area. We talked about that. Uh, the section there's two sections in Swamp Scott where this is allowed. It's not allowed outside of that. I uh, as far as that. I have the, the regulations here, I didn't read that anywhere. Marblehead has nothing. Yeah, only because they haven't done anything yet. Well, but I think yeah. us, I think us saying to an audience that, that we're the only ones from here to no. 28, I just named three towns that are within two miles. I don't want to be the most lenient book town in no, the area. Nor, nor yeah, the right now, we have no rules, which means we're absolutely the most. Absolutely. Lenient. I agree. I think so. I think the reason we're here is to make. It seems to me that the, the, the whole issue of special permit being required or not required is, is the sticking point of this. We've, we've discussed rules and regulations that we're all blue in the face. We're all pretty much in agreement yeah, of enough. what we think of the rules should be as far as, you know, the, the rooms and cars and people and all those, that peripheral regulation. This is the issue that's Right, but I just want to be clear that we're, not, we're not from here to 128, the only town that would allow that. I just named three. Marblehead, Marblehead, Marblehead calls it calls it border. Shall not shall be considered an accessory use, owner occupied dwelling. No more than five borders and three rooms shall be allowed in any dwelling unit. Not allowed if not listed in table of use for zone. Marblehead has no air. That's what that is what they're using. If you go on, that's what they're calling it. I don't know what you're reading, but if you go on Airbnb right now to book a, a place in Marblehead, there's a number of them, and, and there's no, yeah. and they're they're doing the same thing the Han is doing. They're flying under the radar, but they have no rules right now. So I just want to clarify. I don't want to argue, but it's well, you know, we have to make a decision as a committee. We have to make a decision. Are we are we going to require, or are we going to make the suggestion that this be required? Or are we not? We've been. Throwing the, this is the this is the elephant in the room that we've been going around and around since the very first meeting. What are we going to do? I think we we could we could sit here now until the day before the town meeting. We'll still be talking about the same. No, issue. We, we, at some point we just put things to vote and move forward. But I just I I'm not going to, um, and I don't think anyone is doing it purposely. But I'm not going to say any misinformation. Uh, that I know of, and I just wanted to. I just started in Lincoln. Swampscott is limited to tourist lodging overlay district on site management at all times, only private owner occupied residents up to four bedrooms, but no more than 50% gross floor area. That's Swampscott. That's Swampscott. It doesn't read it to you. Rental. It says tourist lodging overlay district. They, and that, and then when they set that up, they said that it encompasses anything to do with tourist lodging. They said they didn't name it specifically. They just said anything to do with this. 
Okay, and, and uh, again, I agree to disagree. If you call Swampscott tomorrow and say, I'd like to register a short-term rental, they're going to say, they don't have to. Have, they don't have to. They, 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 don't, they don't have specific rules they have rules that. at all. They have, they just have a rule. You they have just read it to you. Anything shows up on the radar over there that is a tourist lodging is going to be either in that district or it's going to be shut down. I, I would urge anybody that's interested in the town of Swampscott go on their website or call them directly. And I, I'm not certain what you're reading, and I'm not disputing what you're I'm reading. reading their bylaw. You can buy. You, you can rent a. a you can list the property for rent on Airbnb or VRBO tomorrow in the town of Swampscott legally. I see um, no legal. Can I ask you a question, guys? I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yeah, go yes, ahead. go ahead. Yeah, okay. So Rob made a statement, I think, that every coastal town, 20 miles, 20 mile radius around Boston has a special permit requirement. No, I never said that, Marie. Oh, yeah, so I overheard that. So what did you say? I, I mean, I I thought you said 20 miles. So what did you say about this special permit requirement? And my question is, can, did you do some kind of an analysis? Like, do you have an Excel spreadsheet and saying, okay, I reviewed these towns. Here is the link to their zoning bylaws or some other regulations that they may have in place. And can we take a look at it? Uh, Marie, I never said anything about a special permit in any part of this conversation that I recall. Uh, but the bottom line is that, yeah, I do have a list. I've had this list from back six months ago, and I've quoted from it several times. Uh, this is nothing new. And anybody is welcome to go in and look at what other cities and towns are doing. And yes, you're right. Not everybody says short-term rental, but they categorize it in various, various other ways, such as, again, the tourist zone. Uh, they might call it borders. They might call it. Uh, they might call it uh, bed and breakfast. Basically, they're looking at anything to do with that type of lodging, which is what Nahan has done for for many many years too. Saying that our borders and lodgers allowance is what uh, what, what enabled people who were uh, resident had a resident family and were renting out room, rooms. They were allowed to do it based on that in Nahan. It had it didn't say short term rental. But that was good enough for the planning board back in 2014 when they had a hearing on it. Yeah. So did you maybe the statement you made is that all these are owner occupied? Because I, I seriously, like 10 minutes ago, I feel like you said that every town around Boston has this requirement that short-term rentals must be owner occupied. They do. Did I hear that? Please? That's, yes, that's, you that's, did. That's You're true. absolutely correct. Yeah, that's what you heard. Because that's exactly yeah, the case. Yeah. yeah. So the question I have is, do we have a list? Because we talked about Boston, we talked about Linfield and a few others. Like, uh, for example, which town was that that didn't have it? They're not a coastal town, but they're close Re to Revere. Uh, Revere is in dispute because they're not enforcing their own ordinance. Right. No, but I'm thinking that you know, if you did this review. Do you have it somewhere so we can take a look what the, you know, what they're saying and so forth? I know we talked about couples, no question about it, but I am not sure that any of us actually really went to every town around, you know, 20 mile radius in Boston and did some kind of Excel spreadsheet analysis of some sort. Not, not, I don't not want to only, say that every town prohibits that if we don't have the actual evidence, you know. You know what, Marie? I, I read what uh, I read this back at the beginning, and I read it again after we returned from our August break with updates with respect to Marblehead and Swampscott. Yeah, but you know that doesn't mean that every town has it. So yeah, I, I yeah, if that's what we already discussed, then. I don't have any more questions on it, but I mean, I don't think that every town around Boston has this requirement, but that's beyond the point. Now we need to make a decision oh. if that's going to be the requirement for Nahan, right? Move on. I, I, well, I don't know how to address that. I mean, we just, we just, he, Rob just read a list. I, I have it printed on, on every town. Every, here's the Lynn's ordinance with the highlighted section. Linfield, same way. Saugus. Uh, what else do I have here? Salem, I read from 
on the sale and regulations. I don't, I don't, it's, yeah, it's not written on a spreadsheet. It's got to have it in my hand. You don't need a spreadsheet. It's can all I here. Just make, can I, I just make, can I just I make one comment? I haven't found one though? town yet that allows a non-owner occupied units as a matter of right. The point, the point being that regardless if it's every town or just most towns, why does Nahant want to be the target? And Rob, just to clear no, that's the question we need to talk about, right? But I just well, don't that's, want that's to... what we're trying to talk about, Henry. That's I have, what we're talking I have, about. I have revered website live in front of me. Right on the cover, it says property owners must have a revere address. Review the information on this page prior to registering. There's a fifty dollar fee. Please note that ordinances allow um, short term rentals of residential units only. Short term rentals of rooms or other spaces prohibited. Property owners must have a revere address. Registered short term rentals. Are subject to fines. So again, it's I think we're I think we're all somewhat on the same page here. We need some rules in place, and I think we should charge forward with that. And this is a sticking point. I think we should vote in at some point. Wayne, you stated that you feel like we're a target. Absolutely. That's concerning. What in it honestly, yeah. what what are we a target of? That if because that's something that should be well think about it. If if you if someone needs looking to make this investment and you you're looking in the North Shore area and you're if you're looking at if you're looking at Salem and it says right on here, uh, quote it again, no non-owner occupied short-term rentals are permitted. So you're not gonna do it in Salem. They just you it's very explicit. Lynn says right here, primary residence only. So the so, is the same way. The I mean, so why? So obviously, you're not doing it there because you keep, you're not going to get away with it. So you're going to look around and go, well, who doesn't have the right rules? Ah, uh -huh, doesn't have any rules. So let's go there. So a fear, I mean, a fear, you don't think that that's going to make it be an attraction to someone that wants to do that kind of investment? No, I see a point. Definitely. Well, I don't so, understand why how anyone can dispute that. The fear would be investors swooping into Nahan. Do Absolutely. As I don't have a problem with someone renting out. I don't want to be in a, a magnet for outside investors swooping in here and buying property for no other reason than to, to have an Airbnb. I agree entirely. And I don't I think the vast majority of the people that live in Nahan want to see that happen. I, I agree. I think a lot of the cities we refer to have a hotel industry. I don't care whether they have a hotel industry or not. We don't have a hotel industry for a reason because we don't want one. We we banned hotels in, in 1929. I'm not saying we should. It was only I, I think we should just reflect upon the fact that they might be protecting. I don't think it's deliberately to protect their hotel industry, but I think that's that, that's why Governor Baker passed a, a regulation on it. The, the, it doesn't the, the, mean, I disagree with that. I just I still doesn't think it matters. Uh, that's the only thing that accomplished was uh, no, it did accomplish quite a bit. And basically, we had all these various rules, people trying to figure out what was allowed, what wasn't allowed. Uh, and, and quite honestly, he leveled the playing field by saying, "Okay, this is what this industry is." You know, the, the only the only reason we're even having this discussion is because somebody came up with an idea for an app. Uh, and then all of a sudden, the, the rules changed as far as what's a hotel and what's a house. Uh, I, I, if, if you read when Governor Baker passed that law, it's due to lost revenue for the hotel. Yeah, industry. it might be very if someone staying at a short term rental and not a hotel. That's money that's lost to the state. So the only thing that the state cares about is giving you pretty much a, a tax ID number and you have to submit a tax to them. They don't care if you rent an Airbnb in a tree. I don't care. Governor Baker cares or not. I care. But I, I just Listen, I don't really care what the state cares about or doesn't care about or whether they did it for money or not for money. I care about the town and not. As I think we all I, do. I don't really care about who investors, whether they make money or not. It's not my business. I care about the character of the town and not. I want houses to be be occupied by families, not these, you know, uh, uh, weekend warriors that come in and, and use the property and leave. I don't, that's not what the town and house is here for. Exactly. So if at the very minimum, if we're going to allow it at all, we should at least make and get a special permit. I don't think that's too much to ask. I mean, we could just as easily debate, 
be having this conversation about just not allowing it at all. Which we could be having that discussion. We've already acquiesced to owner occupied that we weren't going to have an issue with that. I, mean, we could, I think I think if if you know if you want to really put it out there, I'm sure that there's a there's plenty of people that'll be sitting at the town hall floor that would love to say there's no way of being beast whatsoever get a mile out of here. We could literally do nothing but send a letter to the planning board saying enforce the bylaw enforce our bylaw uh, yeah but you know that's not going to happen i understand that, but that's the bottom line is i mean that's how simple it could be but obviously we have to do more because we're more than 10, oh, 10 years into this and nothing seems to be happening i well i and um uh, mr chairman if, if yeah I may, go ahead um the planning board has released a as um, yeah, I'm sorry, I read it. Released a consensus preliminary recommendation of planning board on short term housing issues. Um, I'm, of course, the representative from the planning board. I have tried to be a liaison between the two. Um, I have certainly gone back to the planning board and kept them in a very brief manner. And, and I noticed that issues. they absolutely avoided the non owner occupied issue. They didn't mention it once in their statement. It's in here. So, can, uh, I ask you a question? can you guys read the recommendations of the planning board? I am not familiar with it. Nobody sent it to the generic short term rental email, so I don't know what it says. If maybe you guys can summarize. Uh, well, you didn't get a copy of that, Marie? No, I didn't no. get a copy, but I did watch the meeting, mm -hmm. so I know what's in it. I didn't. I didn't want to redistribute it for open meeting law violation, and my for you're the chairman of the board, so I didn't see it as my point. I have it in front of me here. As we know, the planning board. We had um, at least six. Maybe eight meetings. Um, we had a a open forum um, where there was five or so presenters right upstairs in the town hall. Um, a lot of town input right out of the gate. So, so now, give us the crux of the of the of it, so the people that are on the screen can understand where we're headed with this. It's 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 pretty in depth. Uh, you know, I. Might be partial being on the board. I think the planning board did a great job. Um, they, they, again, they they took zoning, they took out other towns, they took ta um, residents' perspective into play. Um, should I read the whole thing? Sure, knock yourself out. It's not that long. It's pretty long. All right. During the summer of 2022, the planning board determined to conduct a review of key issues to regulate short term housing in order to develop a consensus preliminary summary of its views for the short term housing committee. In determining to conduct this review, the planning board recognized that the town had assigned the task of developing these regulations to the short term housing committee and acknowledged that its role was to assist and support the short term housing committee and not to in any way assert that role. In regard, the planning board publicly stated that it would limit its review to zoning issues such as location and use of dwellings, as well as parking and not consider the permitting process, health and safety issues, compliance mechanisms such as suspension and terminations of licenses and penalties, taxes, fees, and other matters that do not pertain to the planning board primary role of addressing zoning issues for the town of Nahan. Two key objectives of engaging in this assessment and providing these preliminary viewpoints were as follows. The planning board had provided little guidance on its consensus views of short-term housing issues to its representative of the planning board on the planning board, Steve Viviano, myself, because the town approved a specific representative from the planning board on the STHC. The planning board wanted that representative to understand the consensus preliminary views of the planning board members. The planning board may hold hearings on zoning issues related to short-term housing in order to recommend bylaw provisions to be considered at the next town meeting and thought it would be useful for the short-term housing committee to understand how the planning board is viewing key short-term housing issues. The planning board solicited and invited members of the public to speak during a public forum in September 2022. The members of the public who spoke were chosen by the chairman of the planning board pursuant to an authorization from the planning board and those selected to speak represented a variety of viewpoints. Following this meeting, the planning board held discussions of key issues with regard to short-term housing within the ambit of its authority in public meetings. In connection with meetings to determine its preliminary viewpoints, the planning board did consider potential conflicts of interest of its members and alternate members. 
Steve Aviano disclosed that he has a beneficial interest in the short-term housing in Ahat, and James Dolman disclosed that he owns a short-term housing in Cape Cod. The planning board sought advice outside legal counsel of whether Steve Aviano's interest in short-term housing in Ahat was a conflict of interest, and legal counsel stated it wasn't. Legal counsel noted that Steve's knowledge of short-term housing issues and problems could be beneficial given his actual experience, and the planning board believes Steve was helpful to the process and provided an even-handed perspective. The planning board determined that they would allow Steve Viviano to continue to be its representative to the short-term housing committee and also determined that James Dolan should be allowed to provide comments on short-term housing despite an ownership interest after extensive discussions of the issues. Because it is providing preliminary viewpoints, the proposal offered have not been subject to legal reviews as the planning board deems it is more efficient to have one legal review covering all areas of short-term housing regulations after the short-term housing committee completes its work. Set out below my eight issue areas with potential rules for each of these areas. Planning board reserves the right to modify these views based on additional data and information as well as if it is called upon to review and recommend zoning bylaws in connection with short-term housing for town meeting. Uh, issue one would be the existence and location of short-term housing. Planning board viewpoint. This is several paragraphs. Um, I'm not going to be able to sum it up without reading it. So go ahead and read it. Legal counsel has advised us that the town does not have the right to ban short-term housing. However, we believe regulation of short-term housing is a priority for our community, and we must balance the right of the homeowner to make reasonable use of their property while establishing rules that mitigate the risk of negative impact on neighbors and neighborhoods. The regulation should not be so restrictive that people who may want or need to rent their homes and can benefit from short-term rentals because difficulties in longer-term rental to pay property taxes or other expenses do not have that opportunity. Yet the regulations must address real health and safety concerns as well as zoning restraints so that we, we minimize the risk of disruptions that can be caused by short-term rentals. We are recommending regulations that fulfill these twin objectives. We do not believe there is in general a reasonable basis for regulating short-term rentals in the Hunt on the basis of whether the units are located in a business district versus residential area, particularly the small size of the business districts as well as the community itself. However, in areas designated natural resource areas and those that are open spaces and recreational uses, those areas should not be impinged or affected by the construction or existence of short-term housing. We should maintain natural resource, open space and recreation areas, protect, protected areas to promote community recreational activities and health. Short-term housing would only be allowed in residential and business area to the extent the use does not impinge on protected areas. At the time, at the same time, the planning board believes that short-term housing should be added to the table of uses in the zoning bylaws. Planning board determined that Less onerous requirements could be considered for short-term permit holders who rent for 14 days or less per year, but that all who provide short-term housing must register. Issue two, class and number of licenses. Planning board viewpoint. The planning board believes the total number of licenses granted through December, 20, uh, December 31st, 2023 and go forward should be limited to in or around four to 5% of the single family housing units are multifamily units deemed eligible for a short-term rental, i.e. 64 to 80 total based upon the number of houses. The planning board believe that we are currently at 40 short-term rental units of the approximate 1,600 livable units, which is approximately 2.5% of the housing in the hunt are used for short-term housing for some period during a calendar year. If the permitting authority receives applications for more than the limit, the planning board recommends that permit holders be chosen fair and equitably from those applicants who meet requirements to receive a short-term rental permit and have had more than 14 days of short-term rentals under a permit for the prior year. The planning board notes that, that Nahant, that Nahant short-term rentals are to a great extent self-limiting because of the challenge of occupancies outside of the summer season and the lack of nearby amenities for the off season. The planning board recognizes the need to provide flexibility to homeowners while minimizes, minimizing disruption. A cap on short-term rentals can meet this objective, but it is important that those hosts are highly rated in running operations should be accommodated for permits than those who have shown less capabilities. Permit holders who select responsible guests 
are providing a valuable service to the community, particularly given that there are no nearby hotels and significant tax revenue should be recognized in the permit process. But we leave the details of the process to the short-term short housing committee. Issue three, number of days short-term rentals may operate. Planning board viewpoint. The planning board recommends that a unit must be rented for two days or more to each guest and that the unit must be rented to one party at a time and not rented as separate bedrooms or spaces to separate persons. The planning board does not see a value of a day limit as we believe the short-term housing can be sufficiently regulated by other restrictions herein. We understand the occupancy rate for Airbnb is less than 50% given the Holland's small population size and limited amenities. It is not clear that a day per year limit is needed or appropriate. We expect the permit granting authority will consider complaints by neighbors, which will further reduce the need for a cap. Issue four, who can qualify to receive a permit? Planning board viewpoint. The planning board recommend the following limits on who can receive a permit. Short-term rentals should be permitted for an LLC or trust only when the shareholders and members of the legal entity are a natural person, as shown on the application. An owner can register to operate one dwelling unit as a short-term owner operator in the Han. If the person owns property individually or owns other, others as an LLC or equitable title or beneficial ownership, the person must choose among those properties to register. However, this rule should be should be perspective and a person should be able to register homes that have been used as short-term rentals prior to the effective date of regulation of short-term rentals in the Han. We ask that the short-term housing committee to we ask the short-term housing committee to consider that if the cap has not been reached, whether it be three or four percent of livable units, the permit granting authority may allow an applicant to have up to three short-term units where circumstances so justify. A tenant cannot offer a rental unit for short-term rentals, nor can owners of units that are below market rate or of income restrictions or otherwise subject to housing or rental assistance or deemed affordable housing be allowed to own operate short-term rentals. Dwellings may not receive short-term rental a short-term rental permit or continue to hold one if they, one, are subject to outstanding building, electrical, plumbing, mechanical, fire, health, or housing, housing or zoning enforcement order, including notices of violation, notices of cure, orders of abatement, cease and desist orders, and corrective actions. If there are any outstanding building permits allowing work on the property in the unit to be rented, or three, if there are any unpaid taxes, fees, including water, sewer, and trash, or assessment related to the property. The planning that the planning board believes that an owner need not reside in the property during the short term rental and need not reside in the hunt during part of or all of the year. However, the owner must appoint a nearby operator as detailed below see issue eight as long as long as the rules and regulations are clearly established and enforced by the owner and town. The necessity of an owner occupied unit is alleviated. Any recommendation regarding enforcement is outside the scope of this document, but the planning board urge a robust enforcement mechanism with meaningful penalties. Issue five, capacity limits. Planning board viewpoint. The maximum occupancy should be set at one more than twice the number of bedrooms. Example, for five bedrooms, a, for five, example, I'm sorry, five for a two bedroom unit, meaning uh, obviously it's two per bedroom plus one. The dwelling's bedroom count is based on the assessor's rec records, legal bedrooms, and shall include accessory units. Occupants two years or older will be counted in this limit. The maximum number of bedrooms that can be rented for short-term housing could be four. There may be more risk of disruption with more bedrooms being rented, but it can be argued that the cap at four bedrooms may not be needed depending on how effective the rules ultimately adopted are. If the, if the ultimately per proposed rule provided provide strong protection against disruption, it may be useful to revisit the cap at four. We also note that the host that takes the risk of having too many guests may have a difficulty maintaining or renewing licenses. Protection of the quiet enjoyment of neighbors must be maintained as well. There is a rumor and lodger provision in the bylaw which would likely be, need to be clarified to be consistent with the short-term housing limit at four units. Planning board suggests that the maximum number of visitors Non-registered guests, visitors for a meal in the house should be limited to in or around five. Issue five, prohibited uses. Planning board viewpoint. Commercial uses are prohibited in short-term rentals. Such uses include, without limitations, accessory use for an event kit center, service for food or drink for payment or use as a bed and breakfast, rental for meeting, etc. 
No excessive noise or outdoor activity or other disturbances between 10 p.m. and 8 a.m. No sign it should be allowed for a short-term rental. Issue five, parking. Planning board viewpoint. Planning board believes that on-site parking of one space per short-term rental bedroom is appropriate and that the permit should specify the number of parking spaces given the layout of the driveway. Vehicles of visitors or guests in excess of this amount must receive a parking pass from the Nahant Police with the pass conspicu conspicuous on the front dashboard. Excess parking for registered guests will be granted at the discretion of the permitting authority. The planning board leaves it to others to determine the appropriate fee amount for parking for short-term housing. The planning board recommends that recreational vehicles, boats, commercial vehicles, and other vehicles that are not regularly used for passenger transportation of small groups not to be permitted on the premise of a short-term rental or on a residential street near a short-term rental for purposes of the parking of a guest or visitors. Issue seven, notification and record keeping. Planning board viewpoint. The planning board believes that the owner should be required to post a notice with the following information in a conspicuous place and owners should be required to send it to the guests to acknowledge that they will abide by all of these rules before the rental starts. The planning board discussed the notice containing the following items, an owner certificate of registration, contact information for operator and whom to call an emergency, instructions for recycling and waste disposal, requirement that dogs be leashed and use a pooper scooper, outdoor activities and noise restrictions, see police bylaws, parking regulations, including visitor parking passes and parking restrictions for street sweeping and snow emergencies, quiet hours, and such other requirements as put forth by Board of Selectmen or the regulatory authority for short-term housing. Planning Board recommends that applicants be required to notify legal abutters, those within 300 feet, within 10 days before filing for permit application or seeking a renewal via hand delivery and certified mail. And this notification by applicant shall be submitted with application or renewal. The Planning Board deems it helpful to the town administrator to issue an annual report on statistical data on short-term housing and post to the town website. The short-term housing approved permits and contact information of the owner, operator, or agent should be provided to the police and fire. The Planning Board suggests that short-term rental owner operators or their agent be required to maintain an up-to-date log of all occupants of their short-term rental units with the name, address, mobile phone number, and driver's license and state license and the commencement and expiration date of the occupancy short-term rental unit. The log must be available to the Department of Health and Police Department. Issue eight, other safeguards, planning board viewpoint. The planning board recommends the following additional safeguards. Registrations are non-transferable and terminate on the sale of a property. The owner or operator must respond to an emergency or neighbor disrupt disruptions or after our activity parentheses, or to mitigate the same as quickly as possible and no later within two hours. And failure to do so without a justifiable excuse may be grounds for immediate termination of the license. The end. Thank you. All right. So, so they don't really address the issue of, well, they, they are, they are addressing the issue of, of the quantity by just limiting the number of permits. That we should or that we should allow, but that's really the only restriction. The way, the way I'm hearing it, they're not. Well, that sounds, I think the, I hearing that accurately, Marie. Yeah, this is. So I think what they're saying is that non-owner occupied are allowed as long as we don't reach that percentage limit in the hub, right? And everybody who is not a resident of Nahant or live in the town needs to have a local contact that will respond to issues within two hours. Um, they also recommended two night stays, whereas we had 24 hours, um, which I think was good. So yeah, wow, I'm really, some of these recommendations are really good. I don't have any issues with, it, with, with any of what they've said. I th their their overall viewpoint was, I believe it was it was to really have some strict rules in place, and the chairman did stress several times that penalties be strict and be enforced. Um, these licenses can be revoked at any time for an infraction. Um, 
I personally voiced, I thought two hours was a lot of time to respond to an emergency. Um, there were a couple of members of the planning board. We, we kicked that back and forth for a good 10 minutes last night, um, but it was, it was left in here two hours. I would entertain that shorter. I would think, you know, a, a disruption to a neighborhood, of course, a water emergency or something um, that's on the, the property. But disruption to the neighborhood should be addressed immediately. And again, I think, I don't know how, how many how many strikes does one get? You know, I, I think that it should be pretty restricted. And I think the moral of the story is that would make these self-governing. That would alleviate any problems and concerns, not immediately. Somebody would have the right to open these and have a complete catastrophe. They absolutely would, as they have for the last 12 years. But at least going forward, the town would then have the right to take that right from them immediately. You know what the town's not good at? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Enforcing its own rules. That's what got us here. I don't see how that, uh, I, I honestly, we can have as many rules as you want. It's not going it, to, it, it literally is not going to control it. We're not, I, I can promise you we won't hire somebody specifically to do this. Uh, and I am, uh, based on history, based on history of the town and, and its inability to enforce its own bylaw, I don't see where rules are going to do anything other than just, you know, complicate ways in which people will avoid them. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we certainly do need rules. It's nice to have something to fall back on. That's not going to protect the neighbors. Basically, if a neighbor complains, they're going to they're, they're going to find themselves in the middle of a fight. Uh, yeah, I haven't found uh, that uh, uh, issuing a complaint based on existing rules does anything more than put the authority having jurisdiction in a place where they have to find some middle ground to make everybody happy. Uh, they don't enforce the rules, uh, even when challenged. Uh, and quite honestly, the person making the complaint can very quickly wind up finding himself the victim, which is why a lot of people don't complain. I know particularly that really yeah. stuck out in me. A gentleman called in, Wayne, I think you were dragged into it at some point. Um, there were wedding venues being mm -hmm. held yeah. in this house. The owner of the property called into the planning board and asked us to put it in writing that we didn't allow that. The planning board found it rather bizarre um, because that individual has the right to put any restrictions he wants on his own house. Um, and it put the planning board in kind of a tough spot and saying, hey, we're not going to allow this, you know, but it's not a bylaw or anything, but we're just going to say for your house, we don't allow this. I think this does that. And I think if that gentleman, had that same circumstance now, he would be shut down immediately. Well, don't you understand that you already can't have a wedding? That you don't, you're not allowed to run your house as a wedding venue. That's what he was doing. It's what he was doing it anyway. Back in 2013, he was right. doing it. You want, you you want, can't been cited for that? Yeah, you want to know how? If I went down the street in the middle of this wedding and caught him in the act, I wasn't. I I I read I. Found his advertisement on Airbnb for a wedding venue. And I asked if, can I issue an order or, or a notice or a warning or something based on the ad? And I was told no. The only way I can enforce that zoning bylaw is to catch him in the act. Well, I'm not going to this guy's house every Saturday afternoon no, to see if there's a wedding going. That's insane. If that, if so that's how we enforce the That's rules. how we enforce the rules here now. So, Perhaps there's a stipulation that a police call will do. If the police go there and report, you know, um, Officer Smith and I got there and they were can you fight know, against what the penalty is for the first violation? Zero. Perhaps we should visit that. Zero. Maybe it's, it's a warning. The second violation is twenty-five dollars. The third is fifty. Well, we can we can make if I can if I can make thousands of dollars every Saturday or rent it out my property as a wedding venue. You know, I'll hand, even the maximum fine is three hundred dollars. I'll be end the three hundred bucks before I even start. So maybe that's something we put in here. Maybe maybe everyone's on probation for a year and they well, lose. This it. is what I'm saying: is we we can make rules until we're blue in the face. 
enforcing those rules is a royal pain. Wayne, back when uh, the town was trying to enforce the bylaw as far as illegal apartments over the Little Island, go ahead. Did the town get sued? Not to my knowledge. Not to your knowledge. What was what was the result of that? Were we were able to shut them down, or were, no? No. I don't. I can't even tell you what the actual outcome of that was because I'd just be embarrassing people that. Okay. I don't. I'm not going to speak out of school. Right. That's fine. But and, and, I made a list of approximately, I want to say, seventy different properties that had some kind of a change in use by the by the assessors that had changed them from single family use to something other than single family without the approval anyone else's approval. And the excuse I got from the board of assessors was, "Well, we only." mark it down as what we see not what the legal use may be so so then you had people who had would be in tax as a two-family house and then use that as an excuse well how could it not be legal i'm being taxed for two yeah. so it must be legal so there we go as far as our ability to enforce rules exactly no I, that one of the tasks the planning board is trying to coincide with this at the same time is auxiliary housing and Another nightmare in the making. I, we, you know, all I can see is that's being another nightmare. In that the is exactly what you just said. How are you going to catch that? I guess it's you not a matter of catching it. I mean, I understand the concept of the auxiliary housing is to allow people to accommodate uh, a, a res, you know residential units within a, within the existing structure. Well, like in an in-law instance. So right? it's not it's like an in-law. Accessory dwelling units. Yeah, okay. Some of the proposals were, uh, will even allow someone to build something in their backyard. Did you call that an accessory dwelling? I just see that as a giant cluster. But part of the, you know, that's that's another discussion for a different day. So as the two of these flirted with one another, the the planning board, in some regards, saw this because you just said it yourself. You have no way. Like, what are you going to do? Go throw someone out of their house? Give them a, a violation for zero dollars for the first finding? There's no way to enforce an accessory dwelling unit or a single family house that's operating as a two family. But this would give us a way, at least as, as long as they're registered as a short term rental. If they pull their registration away, then they can do whatever they want. But if, if they are a short term rental, and they do something out of line, we can take that from them. We can, we can actually have that, that, but, but uh, all of it relies on documentation and you don't have documentation if you don't have people out in the field enforcing it. So can we, Go ahead, can we ask Dennis online and maybe can comment on the topic of enforcement and whether the town can be sued? I mean, I guess we can be sued for any and no reasons, but I mean, what would, be the real complication of enforcing a, a requirement that if somebody violates the rules, their permit is pulled and they can no longer do short-term rentals. So I don't know if Dan is online, but it would be kind of good to hear his opinion. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I can I can chime in a little bit here. Um, the 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 maximum daily fee, as um, Wayne mentioned, is three hundred dollars, but that's only civil. That's in the non, what they call the non-criminal disposition procedure. Um, we also have the ability to go after a criminal charge in district court, Lynn District Court, if this particular homeowner is not abiding by the initial non-criminal disposition procedure. So that has a lot more teeth to it. Now, I'm not quite sure. I've never done it on my watch. I don't know if my predecessor has done it, but that's another avenue that's a lot more um, effective in that it really gets a folks attention because it's a criminal matter is a whole different ball of wax, right? If you're convicted, you have a record. If you're if actually even arraigned, you have a record. And then you go from there. So there is a non-criminal disposition, but you also have the criminal aspect of it too. The non-criminal disposition is based on the idea that it's easier, it's much more streamlined, and hopefully that would be enough to get someone's attention. Because at, at the end of the day, it could be a violation of $300 per day. And uh, that might get up to be a pretty big number. But if that is still not getting folks' attention, the next step is to make it a criminal action in Lynn District Court. And pay the expense for your uh, attorneys yeah. while you're in the court. Do you, do, you do you think that, could that be successful to the town, Dan? Or do you think 
given the nature of the town and our resources rules or let's say somebody with a short-term rental that violates it loses their license and then just says the heck with it to the town and continues to operate are they going to be somewhat unstoppable no they're not unstoppable at all we, we can just uh, we can use one of the two remedies i just mentioned it's not not unstoppable at all you need is, to, that, you, is, is that an expense that the that's an expense to the town um, though to pursue that i it would be they'd have to pay the attorney, I imagine, would be me. Um, and I don't think attorney's fees would be permissible. Um, I have to look more into that. But the attorney's fees might be a part of a judgment that comes down. That could be true. Um, but I just don't know, to be quite frank. I don't think any of us can speak on the success rate. I mean, me personally, I think if you told them something that started it would be a little... I guess you, like Wayne said, you can't tell them your permits revoked to rent your basement to your cousin for twelve hundred dollars a month. But if you tell them your permits revoked to operate short term rental, and you go on Airbnb and they're still on there, there's three hundred dollars a day. Yeah, guys. So I remember reading an article long time ago that when Miami started limiting short term rentals, there was somebody who continued renting. And I think they were assessing, you know, a really large fee on a daily basis. And I remember, I'll try to look that up, but I think that they tried to assess it from the assessor's office or, you know, the town took action to actually collect. Um, so I don't know, maybe there's a, you know, if, if somebody gets charged 300 bucks a day and you're still not comp in compliance, then, you know, you owe the town money and, we can take action against it, right? The same as if I owe them on taxes. Is so that only the against the property then? Yeah. So I'll try to look up that article, see what came out of it in, in Miami. Well, we kind of kind of getting off of our subject here. So the subject at hand was do you think it's appropriate to ask a non-owner occupied rental unit to require a special permit versus other other owner occupied units i don't think it's unreasonable to ask for that i don't know i mean we we've we were already acquiesced to the concept that an owner occupied unit can be they can rent rooms within an existing single family home and as long as they own the house they can rent the whole house that they own and occupy at some point during the year. So to ask someone who does has no intention of ever living in on the property to get a special permit to do that, I don't think is unreasonable. I just it's think the only, it's, it's the only time I'm asking someone to go get a special permit is if you're not going to live there. I just think administratively, it's I don't see the, the gate. There's 40 special permits, and are they going to be required every year? I I think no, special should, special permits are not an annual event if you get a special permit you the only time it would it would expire is if you sold the property i mean i don't know what the town of Nahan has it's probably what did we say there's 40 airbnbs uh short-term rentals in the town mm -hmm. I don't yeah know but there's only a handful of those that are not the town probably doesn't have 40 zoning board of appeals hearings over the course of two or three years well, then they'll just have to have them okay, that's not problem. our problem and that's and their problem my I can't even say concern with it, but my confusion with it is if we have rules in place and these people can lose their right, we're, we're safeguarding the neighbors. The neighbors can call in right now. They can call in at any time and say, hey, I would like this added. I personally brought, I don't know if the woman's on the phone, but I went to the planning board and said there was concern. There was a, a boss idling out front. You heard me read that out. Now, there's no commercial vehicles. Otherwise, standard passenger vehicles for transportation. I think right now we we hammer tools. We get everything ironed out. And at that point, the neighbors of city are, if it doesn't work, the person loses their permit. Well, the person loses their right, you know, and, and again, I, I welcome all nations right now to chime in and say, we should have this for a rule or that. Or, you know, this was next door to me. That would bother me. Maybe a short-term rental can't exist at all, but maybe people would say, if this, if X, Y, and Z happened, I'd be fine with it. 
you know, I, the, the town could benefit from it. The town could make some money off of it. Not that that's our avenue here. We're, you know, we're not here to, to generate an income for the town or not, but if we could do it in a manner that could coexist with the life we all live now in the town we, we you know, we call home, it, it could be a good thing. But I think it's on us to really figure out if we can do this. And it's on us to figure out if we can make rules that can be enforced. Rob, you bring up a great point that, you know, we, we do. We, we don't lack at enforcing rules. We just lack at having the capability to do so. Well, this, again, we, we've been beating this, this thing down to death here now. I mean, I mean, with without a full committee here, I don't see any point. In we're we're not we're not going anywhere. So we need to vote on this. <laughs> There's something that needs to be voted on. going tonight. If we do, I think I think what we need to do is set a date for another hearing for our next for our next meeting. Yep. And and and, and I, declare that this is what we're going to vote on at the next meeting. I, I may very well I see the votes. I may very well agree with you guys or disagree with you guys I'm, I'm again i'm just lacking to see like, what is going to be the benefit and, and again I've, I've heard stories of, of misconstrued opinions being sent on facebook that you know the the objective here is to silence the town not at all we we want the town to speak we want the town's involvement we want the town to tell us this is what we want for rules this is what we want for regulations but between you two gentlemen, I'm just unfortunately the town's never been asked what it wants to do. So we're kind of feeling this is what that's what we're here for. <laughs> that's what these people are doing here on our screen. And so let's let's move to the public uh, input section of our meeting and ask anyone that's uh, on the screen here to ask a question, give an opinion, raise your hand, oh, whatever the technique is, Rob. There's got to be someone with something to say. There's a lot of names on the screen. Here we go. Eric, we have Eric. Go ahead, Eric. Hey, Eric. Where'd you go, Eric? There you are. Unmute yourself. Thank you. So uh, I, I have a couple of things to say. The first is I am fully in support of uh, Mr. Wilson and Rob's uh, initiative to require special permits for non-owner occupied. I would like to see very stringent requirements for what non-owner occupied means. My second point is- um, We need uh, name and address. Uh, sorry, name and address, right. Eric Curtin, uh, 49 Tri-Mountain Road. My second point, I've been listening to this discussion for over six months now. It's clear to me that the town is not listening to the authority having jurisdiction in these matters, who is Mr. Wilson. And I'll leave it at that. Um, I, the, the town planning board getting involved, however they got involved, um, I really have some questions. Um, you know, number of bedrooms plus one makes no sense to me. Uh, we have had serious issues with uh, trash and with parking and with noise that, um, frankly, our police department does not respond to. Um, I think I know why now, but uh, I'll, I'll leave that unsaid as well. And I'll sign off at that. Thank you. Thank you Who's up next? Anyone up? Okay, Alice. Hi, Carrie. Alice Collins here, 22 Breezeal Terrace. Um, I personally am for owner occupied Airbnbs, and the permit is is great as a compromise, but I I cannot see why this compromise is is so hard to agree on right now. I mean, honestly, I hope it is only non-owner um, occupied at this point because it just, we're residential. I want it to be residential. I want to see families grow up here. I don't want to see empty houses. And if you have to compromise, 
the permits where it's at. You really may see a town come out and say, we don't want any of it. Start with the compromise, really. You'll be lucky to get that. That's all I have to say, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Cameron? Uh, Rob, oh, he himself. Uh, hey there, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, listening to uh, everything we have to say. Really appreciate it. Appreciate the STR and the planning board. Uh, I just want to say I do, I do routinely handle uh, enforcement cases in court, and I can tell you property owners take what the judge and what ISD and uh, those criminal violations have to say very seriously. Uh, Good. Court orders are no joke. So if the enforcement mechanism goes to court, uh, they will listen and they do routinely listen. Um, that being said, also the uh, planning board had the forum on this and listened extensively to the community. And I think that they can be applauded for, for putting forth that uh, memorandum. Uh, I, I support the memorandum. Oh, I should say uh, to Prospect Street, I also do uh, operate a uh, Airbnb that I lived in an apartment in town for quite a while. Uh, my dad stays there and my in-laws stay there. Uh, but when they're not, we do have guests from time to time. Uh, but that being said, the, uh, the enforcement mechanism that attorney Scripp referenced uh, is very effective. Uh, and if that were put in place in this circumstance, it, it would effectively enforce this. Also, people would have uh, the likelihood of losing their license, uh, which would jeopardize occupancy for the rest of the year and maybe forever. Uh, so just to add a few comments on that. But I appreciate uh, everyone's time. I know it's not easy to uh, volunteer on these boards and uh, and sit in all these meetings. So I do appreciate it. And I, uh, I support that planning board recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else up there with a comment or a question? Move to adjourn. All right. So let's let, I think we should do this. I, um, I think, I think we should schedule, schedule our next meeting. And and put on the agenda for that meeting a roll call vote on this issue of special. I think we just need to get it. If I'm I'm not going to be disappointed one way or another. I just want to. We just need to make a decision. We've been we've been talking about it and talking about it and talking about it. I think we just need to we need to do a vote, and then the decision will have been made as far as the committee is concerned, because we still have to write up. How we're going to recommend what is what we've got all those we've got about 20 different versions of rules and regulations at this point we need to get it down to a single sheet of paper with recommendations that now that we're going to recommend and how that's how that how that may or may not get presented at town at town meeting mm -hmm. right so we've, we've still got work to do even once we've decided what we wanted to say we've got work to do to get it in front of town meeting you know, and we've got what dan's right as far as changes, so so we we need these are the decisions we need to make sooner rather than later. So I think that's what we need to do at this point. That's we good. need to get a full we need to get a full committee in this room. Do the vote at our next meeting. Yep. So let's figure out when we want to do that next. Uh, it's only the sixth, but do we want to have a meeting? Uh, we can do the twentieth if you want. Yeah, I'm going to say no. Okay. I don't, I'm going to guess that until January. I'm going to say that someone's going to want to go away, or yep. whatever the case may be, yes, right? Yeah. So, so let's so let's jump into that first week of January uh, if we can. All right. If I could ask, go ahead. Um, the fifth Tuesdays in the month throw these boards off because we've been alternating weeks, but then when there's a fifth week, it puts the plan. You, you can pick any week you want. It's we, we it's not a hard and fast right. rule. Just we, yeah, we, just, we, we, we just need to be committed to Tuesdays. The next planning board meeting is and if we not put it on them, they're probably beneficial to all. I feel like they do it almost weekly, but they do it early. Oh, you know what? Planning board's first and third Tuesday of the month, and that's where we threw it. So what's the second Tuesday of January? Yeah. So let's do it then. Okay. January 10th. Will be our next meeting. All you listeners out there, put it on your calendar. And at which time we're going to take a vote one way or another on the special permit issue. Okay. Do we shoot somebody go over and pick up John, bring him over? I we may have to. Uh, <laughs> I have to go over and pick him up myself. I'm going to get him here. Do you feel it? Excuse me. Well, Hi, how, yeah. many, how many people are on your board? 
Excuse me? How many people are on the board? Five. Five. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So guys, we're gonna do this as a hybrid meeting, correct? I would assume so. Yeah, so we need to just maybe John can dial in if, or if anybody can't well, attend in person, we can dial yeah, in. Yeah, no, I, I'm not really gonna make him come here as long as he's on the screen. <laughs> but I mean, I don't know. We had no advance notice that he wasn't gonna be here tonight. So I don't know why he's not here, but we have to make sure that we have a full a full board so we can make get votes done. Yeah, I agree. If he's not here, I'm open to the four of us coming to terms. You know, well, I'm let's have a, let's, but let's do this because even after we even if, even once we make this decision, we've got we've got work to do, and I don't want to be I don't really don't want to be doing this. Come you know. April and May of next year. I want we want to let's get it done. Agreed. It's been it's been going on long enough. Well, let's keep in mind this, if this is a zoning thing, that's what we're planning board for town meeting. So I think end of January is really our target. Yeah, absolutely. I want to get it done as soon as possible. Okay. okay. Are we good? Anyone else out there have a question or a comment before we adjourn? Mister, I'll point out that you don't need a you don't need a full committee to take a vote. If you have a quorum. Well, you don't need three uh, votes, just so you know. You probably know. <laughs> we've got that piece. <laughs> we know that, but I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to hear about it after the fact that somehow we ganged up on someone or or didn't okay. get everyone's voice in here. Yeah, right. full, this, yeah. this is big. We, it's only five of us. There's no reason why we shouldn't be able to get a full committee in in the room or at least on the screen. Susan Casimio had her hand up uh, for a second, but I don't see her now. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's me. Um, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Yep, Susan Castivio, 65 Mayolas Road. I was a little late to the meeting tonight. Um, I just want to say thank you all for your dedication um, in pushing this uh, forward and uh, for focusing on the non-owner occupied issue. I think it's really important. Um, so I just, it, this is just a thank you and um, Happy holidays to everybody. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. So, second. Uh, all those in so, favor say aye. Aye, aye, aye. That's unanimous. Motion. Um, Meeting adjourned at 8.15. Thank know. you. Good night.